Welcome back to week six, and in video two, we're going to focus in on how glacier ice forms and how ice moves. So we have some cool websites for you to visit and watch on your own time. Um, but basically, um, ice. the question is, how does ice form? We start out with these nice dendritic um, snowflakes or maybe pellets. How does it go from this nice white fluffy stuff to solid ice? And this video here shows you that. So this video um, is on the Nova website. If you click on this Launch Interactive, and we have a slideshow that kind of walks you through the whole process. So we get these beautiful snowflakes forming in the atmosphere. They fall on the Earth. And over time, so this is some older ice below. This is the newer snow falling. Um, and as we have more and more snow layers building up, more pressure is put on those layers below. And so we end up taking those those dendritic snowflakes and they kind of recrystallize into these smaller bead-like pieces. So here's your snowflake now after you've had all this compaction on top. And then we continue over time and we end up with those snowflakes getting smaller and smaller, more compact. So taking that same volume of ice um, that was in that snowflake, lots of air space in that snowflake, and then compressing it down into a um, much smaller space to create that glacier ice. And so you can see over time how that happens. And there's our snowflake. Um, after it fell on the surface, eventually over time it works its way down into the ice as it's being built up and flows down towards the terminus. So you guys can view that on your own time. Um, glacier movement, so glaciers move faster in the center and towards the top. I'm going to show you a couple um, diagrams here in a few slides. And some glaciers don't actually move on the base at all, but they actually flow internally. So because the ice is um, almost frictionless, the ice can actually flow against itself and fracture um, at the bottom of the glacier. There's these two cool videos here, this glacier flow video to watch. Um, it's a video shot from underneath the ice, um, measuring um, through this kind of cave under the, uh, the ice flows over. They put like a little bicycle wheel to measure the glacial flow and they took a time-lapse video, which is pretty neat. And then there's this interactive simulation that you can play with um, here. I'll pull that up here and you're going to have to download um, this program basically or you can run it. It takes some time but you can increase the amount of snowfall on the glacier, you can increase the amount of erosion and um, melting of the glacier, you can take cores, you can put flags in it to see how it moves over time. It's a pretty neat simulation and if you're not you're having a hard time understanding the whole idea of glaciers advancing and retreating but still moving at the same time, this is a great animation to help you out. So to show you kind of what happens inside a glacier, so we have the we have the snow and ice accumulating up here in the higher points in the accumulation zone, so that's where this nice fluffy snow is turning into solid ice. The ice flows down by the pull of gravity and then it flows inside the glacier down towards the ablation zone. So the equilibrium line is where we have even amounts of accumulation and ablation. The ablation zone is where we have melting occurring or loss in ice volume. So these two views that we have here, we have a side view, a cross section, so if we were to take a slice or drill a, a hole in the ice and install measurement devices. So if you drill a hole in the ice perfectly vertical and then install uh, maybe a plastic tube or a series of GPS devices, which is what you see happening over here. These people are taking some measurements of the ice and they leave it in the ice for a significant period of time. What they notice is that the bottom of the glacier moves much, much slower than the top. And that's because this top portion we don't have the ice interacting with the bedrock below. So there's less friction on it so it can move much faster, whereas the bottom interacts with the bedrock below, has that frictional drag, and then moves much slower. Same thing if we look at the top. And that's what you see here. These um, glaciologists have these stakes that are put in the ice that they come back to every year, um, maybe periodically in one summer, and take measurements. And what they find is these they put that array of stakes in the ice in a perpendicular line across the ice. 
and then they come back every year and take measurements and what they find is that the glacier is moving faster in the center than it is on the edges and it's the same reason why the bottom of your ice moves slower because your edges are interacting with the sides of the valley so it's going much slower pretty neat stuff so how does a glacier increase and decrease in volume well that a lot of that has to do with the mass balance of the ice so we have a glacier that's stationary it's not advancing or retreating so our terminus the end of the glacier is staying in the same spot it's not moving forward or back and what's happening is your accumulation the amount of snow you input into the glacier is equal to the amount that is melting away so we still have that internal flow from accumulation to ablation, but we have equal inputs and outputs. In the case of an advancing glacier, we have more ice input inputting than we have melting off. So we could either have way more accumulation, so crazy, crazy snow year over and over and over and over again, or we could have less and less ablation happening, so just cooler temperatures year round. So it, overall, less, yes, less wastage than accumulation. And then if we have a glacier retreating or shrinking in size, our accumulation decreases, but our wastage or ablation, melting, whatever you want to call it, is increasing. So we could have maybe increased year-round temperatures, or we could have less snowfall. So either one of those could cause your glacier to retreat. So that's how glaciers move and how ice forms. We'll come back in the next video and talk about how glaciers shape the landscape.